according to Romans 10 verse 17. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. The heard word of God meditated upon and put into practice engenders joy to the heart, thereby releasing your desired miracles. With an expectant and delightful heart, receive the anointed word of God from the throne of grace. By the word of the Lord, every one oppression of the devil shall be terminated upon your life. Get set for a journey into God's word that will enlighten you and give you an encounter to remember. And all who believe that shall be your experience, shout aloud, Amen. Shout aloud, Amen. Shout aloud. Isaiah 66 verse 2 The B part He said for to this man will I look Even to him that is poor And of a contrite heart that trembleth at my word That does things according to my word Wouldn't do, want to do his own thing That is contrary He said verse 3 He said for he that killeth an ox As if he slew a man And then he goes on And then the last part The last part of verse 3 says He said yea They have chosen their own ways and their soul delighted in their own abominations. That's why nothing is working. So check yourself. They have delighted in their own ways. So God is saying, let's settle down to check our ways. Check what we're doing. So you are not sowing seeds. And as you drop it, the thing has died there. And you're wondering why nothing is working. But I dropped my tithe. But I dropped my offering. Why is the door closed? He said, because they are going after their own ways. And God is rejecting their offerings. But from today, your offerings shall not be rejected. I didn't hear an amen from somebody. I didn't hear another amen from somebody. Number two, why are we interested in foundations? Sure foundations. The Holy Ghost said, so you will not labor in vain. To put an end to laboring in vain. To terminate laboring in vain. Laboring in vain. He said, because if you are not careful, there's something called the curse of financial crisis. The curse of financial crisis. When it comes your way, it corrupts your labor. When it comes your way, it corrupts all your efforts. So you are struggling and you are sweating. It is not showing. Bible talked about it in Zechariah. In the book of Zechariah. Chapter 5, Zechariah chapter 5, from verse 1 to 4, but specifically verse 3. Specifically verse 3, he said, Then he said to me, This is the curse that went forth over the face of the whole earth. For everyone that stealeth shall be cut off on this side, according to it. And everyone that sweareth shall be cut off. God is saying, You want to enjoy financial dominion? Check. Because you can't do what you like. You must always do what is right to be blessed by God. You can't do what you like. You must always do what is right to be blessed by God. Always do what is right. So you must come to a point whereby you are walking in the light of his word to enjoy his flow. Walking in integrity to enjoy his flow. Walking in the flow of heaven to enjoy his flow. In Psalm 1, verse 1 to 3, the Bible makes it clear. You want to enjoy the flow from heaven? Want to enjoy financial dominion? Psalm 1 verse 1, it says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. Say amen. He meditates upon it day and night. It shall be like a tree planted by the rivers, and bringeth forth fruit in his season. His leaves shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Friends, God is saying, as you walk in my ways from tonight, lift your right hand. I declare anything you touch this month shall prosper. Any effort of yours this month shall prosper. Any move you make, lift your right hand, it shall prosper. You shall prosper this month. That amen, let it be a screaming one. And that's why in our midweek services this month, we are looking at this close subject of a sure foundation of financial dominion and using the patriarchs of old as our examples. Using the patriarchs of old as our examples. God's servant opened this teaching 
And he took us through the life of Abraham, the patriarch, as our example of having a sure foundation of financial dominion. And tonight, we're looking at the life of Job. The life of Job. The life of Job. Job, the servant of God. And let me say here for emphasis, brethren, that giving kingdom priority to the use of your resources guarantees a life of financial fortune. Giving kingdom priority so the use of your resources guarantees a life of financial fortune. That everything that comes to your hand, your priority is God's kingdom. Then God's hand will remain mightily upon your finances. We had God's servant say that the covenant root of financial fortune is serving God and the interest of his kingdom with your money. The covenant roots of financial fortune is serving God and his interests with your own money. Kingdom priority, kingdom attention is your excitement. That's the root of financial dominion. That's the sure foundation of financial dominion. Kingdom priority, serving God's own interests with your resources. The promotion of his kingdom. In Haggai chapter 1 verse 5, Haggai chapter 1 from verse 5, there's a very strong word from 5 to 7. Haggai chapter 1 from verse 7, we say, Now therefore, said the Lord of hosts again, consider your ways. Tell yourself, consider your ways. Say that to yourself, consider your ways. The next verse, what is it trying to say? It said, but if, if you don't consider your ways, See what's going to happen. He said, you have sown so much, but you are bringing little. You don't have enough. He said, you drink, and you are not filled with drink. You clothe you, but there's none warm. You earn wages. They enter a bag of holes. Come on, say, God, have mercy. Say, Lord, God, have mercy. Say, Lord, say, God, have mercy. The next verse, why would this kind of thing happen to you and me? The next verse. The next verse, he said, thus said the Lord, consider your ways. You know why? He said, he said, God said clearly that because you have not given attention to his kingdom, from tonight, grace to give kingdom attention, receive it in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm not hearing your amen. That is the interesting thing about the life of Job. Everything about his life was God-centered. Everything about his life was the fear of God. Everything about his life was the kingdom of God. And we're going to look at those striking features in the life of Job tonight. And I'm sure as we x-ray this great man's life, somebody will catch a new insight. Somebody will receive liberation here tonight. I'm not hearing your amen if you're there. It said in Job 29 from verse 4, it said in the days of my youth, the secrets of God were unborn my tabernacle. He said, when the Almighty was here with me, my children were here with me. He said, I wash my butter, my steps with butter. And I poured out rivers of oil. Why? He said, the secrets of God, the ways of God were upon me. He said, when I, verse 7, he said, when I went out to the gates of the city, they prepared a seat for me in the street. Verse 8, he said, the young man saw me. They hid themselves. The aged, it was honor everywhere. Why? The secrets of God, the ways of God, are a way of life for him. Verse 9, he said, the princes ref refrained talking. They laid their hands on their mouth. Verse 11, he said, when the ears heard me, they blessed me. When the eyes saw me, they gave witness to me. How? Where did he get this kind of life from? Verse 12, he said, because... I deliver the poor that cried. Say amen. The fatherless and him that had none to help him, I was the one helping them. Why? For the kingdom of God. Help the fatherless. Clothe the naked. All the converts, I transport them to church. Make sure the hand are going out. Verse 13, he said, Then the blessing of him that was ready to perish, 
came upon me. I was the one that rescued them. He said, I, and I caused the widow's heart to sing for joy. Shout hallelujah. Kingdom priority. Righteousness priority. If you read on. Verse 15. He said, I was eyes to the blind. And my feet to the lame. I was father to the poor. And the cause of him that I knew not, I searched out. And I break the jaws of the wicked. I was the deliverer of everyone. Anywhere near to rescue them, I was there. Verse 18, he said, Then said I, I die in my rest, and I will multiply my days in the sun. He died gloriously. That shall be your testimony. I said, That shall be your testimony. He died. There was no indebtedness anywhere. There was no mark anywhere. God is saying, Check out this life. Follow his ways. They are my ways, and things will work for you. Check out this kind of life. You see, I died in my rest. Just like Abraham. Genesis 24, verse 1. When the time came, look at Abraham. The Bible says Abraham was old and full of age, and God had blessed him in all things. Died with a blessing everywhere. Somebody tonight, whatever is tying your life down, that is making you die before your time, I curse it tonight in the name of Jesus. Whatever is weighing you down, you are just 23, but by reason of the luggage of life, you are looking like 64. Tonight, that weight is lifted over your life. I declare with all the faith in my heart that from tonight's encounter, you will never be poor again. Let that amen be a resounding one. What are the futures of this unique man called Job? Number one. What are the special things we can learn from the life of Job? Number one. Was that Job feared God and hated evil. Job feared God and hated evil. No matter what anybody is saying, no matter what anybody is doing, Job was a man, he will always stand in the place of the fear of God. If God is not in it, I'm not interested. If it doesn't please God, forget it. If it doesn't glorify God, I'm not there. The Bible talked about him in Job. Job chapter 2. Job chapter 1, verse 1 and 2 first. Job chapter 1, verse 1 and 2 first. Talking about this man, Job. He said, there was a man in the land of Uz, whose name was Job. This man was a perfect and upright man. Say amen. And one that feared God and eschewed evil, hated evil, fight evil. And this man was blessed. Seven daughters, three children, blessed on every side. I hear God say, Psalm 112, verse 1, 2, and 3, blessed is the man. Psalm 112, verse 1, verse 2, verse 3, blessed is the man that feared the Lord. If that's you, say amen. That delighted greatly this commandment. That's it. The fear of God is the provoker of the blessing of man. The fear of God is the attractor of the promotion of man. Blessed is the man that feareth the Lord. That delighted greatly this commandment. Verse 2. That kind of man, he says, his seed shall be mighty on the earth. Say amen. His generation of the upright shall be blessed. A louder amen. That means as long as you are walking in the fear of God like Job, not only shall you be a blessed man, your seed shall be stars on the earth. Your seed shall be mighty on the earth. Verse 3 said, wealth and riches shall be in his house. And his righteousness shall endure forever. So when you walk in the fear of God, you cannot be small again in life. When you walk in the fear of God, you can't be small again in life. You can't be serving a big, big God and have a small, small destiny. You can't be serving a big, big God and be having a frustrated destiny. You can't be serving a big, big God and having a tied down destiny. Blessed is the man that walketh in the love, fear of the Lord. That walketh in his command and said, the seed shall be mighty on the earth. Can I hear an amen? And by reason of the way that Job walked, God was boasting about him everywhere. Called the devil and boasted to him. 
That means the fear of God will make God to boast about your life among men. In verse 8 and 9, verse 8 and 9, And the Lord said to Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job? There is none like him in the earth. A perfect man, an upright man. Again, one that feared God and eschewed evil. That means when you stand in the path of God, God will continually testify of you. Two major places God testified of him that this man, an upright man, hated evil. Everything that looks like evil in your life is a choker of the blessing of God in your life. It will choke the blessing of God. We corrupt the blessing of God in your life. Therefore, tonight, get ready. Whatever it will take for you to come under the fear of God, receive it tonight in Jesus' name. You can't be connected to the ever big God, ever prosperous God, ever glorious God and be stranded. Number two, what's so special about Job? This job that because of his fear of God, he became the greatest man in all the East. What's so special about him? Number two, is that Job, in the face of challenges, walked in integrity. In the face of the greatest challenges, he still walked in integrity. That means integrity is the preserver of man's destiny. It's the lifter of man's destiny. In Job chapter 2 verse 9 and 10, talking about him, not only was it said in the face of challenge, he said, then his wife said to him, do thou still retain thy integrity? Maybe that's what they are telling you. Are you still serving that God? Are you still going to Goshen? All these days you don't have a job? He said, cause this God and die. Friends, there have been many things that want to challenge your integrity. Integrity is talking about honesty, uprightness, standing for truth. Not that you do many things and there are many things that you cannot explain. Don't you, are you still serving this God? Verse 10, he answered her. But he said unto her, thou speakest as one of the foolish women. Speak it. What? Shall we receive good and not of the hand of God? Shall we not receive evil? Is it, not, is it all that God did not? He said, Job. Say that I will remove sin from my lips. I'm here to announce to you grace to live a life of integrity is coming upon your destiny here tonight. I am not hearing your loudest amen if you're there. Every opportunity to turn his back against God, Job refused. There was a challenge of his health, he still upheld God. There was a challenge, all kinds of issues in your office, he still upheld God. Everybody was doing everything. He still upheld God. In Job 27, verse 3 to 6, he testified again. Brethren, I'm saying to you, you don't have to allow the ways of men to corrupt your destiny. Let the ways of God be the race of your destiny. He said, all the while, my breath is with me. And the Spirit of God is in my nostrils. Verse 4, he said, my lips shall not speak wickedness. Say amen. Nor my tongue utter deceit. So every wickedness you gather, every love is top of your life. Look at verse 5. He said, God forbid that I should justify you. He said, till I die, I will not remove my integrity from me. That's a man that is eternally blessed by you. He said, till I die. I will hold on to honesty. I will hold on to morality. I will hold on to integrity no matter what you do. And God looked at him and marked him right again. Job, your end shall be a most glorious one. Tonight, whatever is assigned to corrupt your destiny, I curse it from the roots here tonight. He had all kinds of challenges, but in spite of he held on to his integrity. Job 27 verse 6. He clearly testified, he stands for righteousness. He said, my righteousness I hold fast. I will not let go. My heart shall not reproach me as long as I live. I will hold on to my righteousness. I will hold on to my stand with God. When he took that stand, God answered to him, from tonight, Maroshi Agazalaba, somebody grace to stand for God. 
so that God can glorify you. Lift your two hands, lift your voice, let your amen be the loudest one. <laughs> Number three, about the life of Job. What's so special about this man? One, he feared the Lord. Two, he took a stand for integrity. And three, he put iniquity far from him. The Bible says, flee all appearances of evil. Put iniquity far. Brethren, show me your friend. I can tell you who you are. Once your best friend is into so many things, get ready. You are following him. Come on, Lonnie. You are following him. Show me your environment. I can tell you whether you will survive in God or not. Many of us need to go back and check your environment. Check what are the things you indulge in. To tell whether it's going to lead you to blessing or choke you forever. Job was a man. He was jealous about his environment. Put iniquity far. Anything that we start, he said, a good name is better than any other thing. Far from him. Tonight, any agent of sin, agent of evil around your destiny, I declare divine separation tonight. I declare divine divorce tonight. I'm not hearing your amen if you're there. If it's your wife, don't divorce her. It was let iniquity be far from your tabernacle to command financial fortune. In Job chapter 22, the word of the Lord is clear. He took a stand for righteousness. Anything that will not glorify God, he put it far. Job 22, from verse 21 to 25. Job 22, 21 to 25. He said clearly, he said, Acquaint now thyself with him, and be at peace. Thereby good shall follow thee. Say amen. Say loud amen. Receive, I pray thee, the Lord up from his mouth. Lay up his word in thy heart. Verse 23. If thou return to the Almighty, thou shalt be built up. Am I talking about somebody there? Thou shalt put iniquity far from your tabernacle. Lift your right hand and say, iniquity far. Louder, do like this, iniquity far. Make it very violent, iniquity far. When that happens, say, thou shalt lay up gold as dust, and the gold of offer as the brooks. Yea, the Almighty shall be thy defense. Hello. And thou shalt gather plenty of silver. Somebody ready for that? Let your amen show it. When iniquity is far from you, then glory shall be resident with you. When iniquity is far from you, then beauty from God shall be resident with you. When iniquity is far from you, then abundance from God shall be resident with you. That's why you must fight sin with every energy in you. Fight iniquity with every energy in you. Fight misconception with every energy in you. Whoever will not let you go, let there be a cut out. Look at verse 26 and 27. It confirms it again. When it says, For thou shalt, then shalt thou have thy delight in the Almighty. Say amen. And shall lift up thy face unto God. And thou shalt make a prayer unto him. And he shall hear thee. And thou shalt pay thy vows. Hallelujah. I'm speaking to somebody here tonight. Whatever has been trying to separate you from God, I curse it tonight. I declare you are delivered from it tonight. I declare you are separate from it tonight. Many, many of us, when the time comes, need to rush out and rededicate your life to God. And declare, Father, deliver me from iniquity. Save me from these unclean ways. I run to Jesus. I return to the Almighty so that I can enjoy plenty of gold, plenty of silver, plenty of beauty, the benefits of salvation. I'd like you to know, brethren, Job stayed on like this. Until a point whereby instead of troubling his enemies, he was praying for them. Instead of pointing his enemy, he was praying for them. And the Bible says that just Job, whatever is lost, was gloriously restored to him by God. He had twice whatever he had had before. Job 42, verse 10 to 12. He stayed on in integrity. He stayed on in righteousness. And the Lord turned the captivity of Job. That shall be your family. 
when he prayed for his friends. Also, the Lord gave Job twice as he had before. Let that somebody's amen be loud if you are wanting that. Verse 11. He says, so the Lord, verse 11, he said, then came there unto him. All his brethren, all his sisters, and all that he had before all his acquaintances, they eat, eat bread with him. He became the, the supplier of everybody. And they bemoaned him and comforted him of all the evil that he So every man also came and they still gave him money. Ha, ha, ha. Friends, integrity is an attractor. Integrity is a multiplier. Integrity will bring more. They, they stood for integrity. At the end of the day, people were bringing to him. They may look like they are insulting you now, but relax. Use it as pomade. Very soon, all your mockers will come and fellowship with you one by one. I'm not sure I have a believer here tonight. In verse 12, verse 12 very clearly at the end, he said that so the Lord blessed the latter end of Job more than his beginning. Say amen. He had 14,000 sheep, 16,000 camels. That is multiples of what he had before. And a thousand yoke of oxen. And a thousand she ashes. And God kept giving to him. And God blessed him. I'm here to announce to you. Whatever it takes to walk in the fear of God, receive it tonight. I said receive it tonight. With the loudest amen, receive it tonight. Whatever it will take for you and I to stand for integrity on the way of your life. I said receive it tonight. And whatever it will take for you and I to stand for righteousness. And fight iniquity out of your life. With the loudest amen, it shall be upon your destiny. Wherever you are tonight, it's time for a change. Wherever you are for tonight, it's time for you to take a strong decision tonight. To either be on the winning side or be on the losing side. Either for you to be a mediocre forever in life or for you to be lifted by God. It's time for you to make a choice tonight. Whether to hang around darkness or make a choice for light. Whether to hang around poverty for the rest of your life or to allow God to recognize you and boast about you and bring blessings your way, bring glory your way. Except a man be born again, he cannot enjoy the flow of God's glory. Enjoy the beauty of God's kingdom. Wherever you are under the sound of my voice, you want to make a decision for the Lord for a life of glory, a life of beauty. You want to run to Jesus tonight for deliverance, for liberty. You want to be born again, born of God, born of water, born of the Spirit for a change. Rise to your feet. I want to pray with you especially tonight. God bless you. Rise to your feet. Rise to your feet wherever you are. Wherever you are, church, are you clapping? Wherever you are, you're tired of them pointing fingers at you. Jump on your feet. You're tired of them looking at you as they never do well. Rise to your feet. Tonight is your night. Let God change your story. Rise to your feet wherever you are. You want to say, Jesus, change my story tonight. Remove iniquity far from your life. Rise to your feet wherever you are. And just let Jesus change your story. Show wherever you are. Also, you are here tonight. And you know a lot of iniquity around your life. A lot of shame around your life. A lot of mockery around your life. Run to Jesus tonight. Rise to your feet. I want to pray with you. God bless you. Rise to your feet. You were saved before. You lost your salvation. Return to the Almighty tonight and it will change your story. Everybody on your feet, return to the Almighty. Pick your bag and Bible and come to the front here. I want to pray with you. Wherever you are, you are returning. Wherever you are, you are returning. Wherever you are, you are returning. Pick your bag and Bible. Return to the Almighty tonight. Return to the Almighty tonight. Let him change your color. Return to the Almighty. You have gone far. Return. I'm returning. Pick your bag and Bible and come. I'm returning for liberty. I'm returning for healing. I'm returning for a change of story. Jump on your feet. Don't say next time. Check your life. Too many things are not working. Return to Jesus now. Check your destiny. Too many things are out of place. Return to Jesus now. Check your life. Too many things you cannot explain. Return to Jesus right now. Return to the Almighty right now. Check your life. A lot of question mark. Run to Jesus right now. Let him change your name and change your story. You are here tonight. You have even contemplated suicide. Run to Jesus tonight for liberty. Pick your bag and Bible and just come. 
Pick a bag of Bible and just come. Church, the more you clap, the faster they come. You're here tonight. You were saved at one time. You lost your salvation. But tonight is your night of rededication. Tonight is your night of restoration. Join them quickly. They're coming. Join them quickly. I want to have restoration tonight. And everything you have lost, like Job, shall be restored. Everything you have lost, like Job, shall be restored. Rush out here. Everything you have lost, run here. Everything you have lost, like Job, shall be restored. Your dignity shall be restored. Run to Jesus. Your beauty shall be restored. Run to Jesus. Your color shall be restored. Run to Jesus. Your glory shall be restored. Run to Jesus. Join them quickly before I pray. Join them quickly. Everybody in front, lift up your right hand. I want to pray with you. Join us quickly before I pray. Say this prayer after me, Lord Jesus. Lord, Lord Jesus, I come to you tonight to surrender my life. Save me. Make me your own child. From tonight, I confess. I repent. And I declare, blood of Jesus, sanctify me. Thank you, Lord. From this night, Jesus is my Lord. Jesus is my Savior. I will serve you forever. Thank you, Lord. I am born again in Jesus' mighty name. I pray for you, Father. Keep your hand lifted up. Let these ones be saved. Write their names in the book of life. And from today, turn their troubles to testimonies. You are blessed in Jesus' mighty name. Thank mm -hmm. you.